on a new series on faith. And um, during bo, the biblical times, it, in fact, if you talk about the word faith, it took about several books until we get to the New Testament for people to define what faith is. In Hebrews, uh, uh, when we talk about faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But it took that many books and that many hundreds of years before people can define the word faith. The reason for that, because in the Bible, every time they would define faith, they don't have an actual definition except ganito yung sasabihin nila. So what is faith? They'll always say, let me tell you a story. Every time they talk about faith, they'll tell you a story of faith. They're going to talk about Abraham and his faith. We're going to talk about the, the, the major prophets, the minor prophets. We're going to talk about all the heroes of the Bible. Every time they talk about the word faith, there is no one easy description of faith. Obviously, we had a description, we have a definition in Hebrews. But let me tell you a story. Why? Because stories are so powerful. More than just defining something, stories are so powerful. For example, this picture. This is called the burst of joy picture. I mean, we see the joy, right? We see the, the excitement of the family meeting their dad. Left on its own, we know what joy looks like. We know what it means. We have a picture. We have a description of what joy is. But if you understand the story behind this picture, you'll actually understand even more the word joy. Because in this picture, this is a uh, picture of... Uh, this was taken March 17, 1973. This was actually a picture of uh, Lieutenant Colonel Robert L. Sturm reuniting with his family because on October 27, 1967, Sturm was actually a, uh, a pilot. He was shot down in North Vietnam. He was captured for five years. And the family doesn't know what happened to him. They had no news, and to them, he was already dead. But in 1973, he was finally released. And this was their first meeting for five years of not hearing anything about their dad. That's a story behind this picture. Stories are powerful. And that's why in this series, we're going to be looking at different stories of faith like no other because it's not just enough to define faith. It's important for us to see stories that talks about and really describe what faith looks like. And that's what we're going to be doing today. As you all stand up, we're going to be reading from Hebrews 11, verse 7. Hebrews 11, verse 7, it says here, By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. Take a note of that. For the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world, the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Lord, we thank you for your word today. Holy Spirit, minister in our hearts. Lord, let us understand, not just by definition, but Lord, really understand it by our, with our, our, our intellect and in our soul, in our spirit, what faith is and how, Lord, how a life of faith really affects not just our lives, but our families' lives, the lives of the people around us. And that, Lord, you've called us to be people of faith. Lord, let your Spirit define intimately what word, the word faith is in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can go ahead and take your seat. Noah's Ark. Okay, we're not in kids' church today, but I love this story. Growing up, for many reasons, okay? When we talk about Noah's Ark, um, immediately the things that we will think about are the animals, diba? They're by pairs. One of the reasons why I started loving zoos growing up is because it's the only place then I can see wild animals that are not normally in the Philippines. It was actually inspired by Noah's Ark. I would hear this in kids' church. I would hear this from my dad telling me a story. So it's a, it's a, it's a staple children's story from the Bible. It's almost as if it's related to fairy tales growing up, part of the stories that kids will hear, Noah's Ark. But there is really such a bigger, deeper experience when we talk about the, the story of, uh, of Noah. 
And in the verse that we read, it was being hinailight po ng ating Panginoon. Hebrews 11 actually is what we call the Hall of Faith. These are names. These are different characters in the Bible that were highlighted because of their faith. And for Noah, it was because of his obedience to the command of God, which happened starting from Genesis 6. Now let's read from Genesis 6, 11. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it in inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark is 300 cubits, its breadth 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. Make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubit above and set the door of the ark in its side. Make it with lower, second, and third decks. For behold, I will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life under heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, your, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living, living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds according to their kinds, and of the animals according to their kinds, and of creeping thing of, of the ground according to its kind. Two of every sort shall come, into, shall come in to you to keep them alive. Also, take with you every sort of food that is eaten and stored up. It shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. Now, just basing from this, we're not going to go into the math of things because math doesn't like me for some reason. But it's available online. Okay? There are graphs on how enormous this task is, on how big this arc is. When we talk about the, this particular arc. But one of the things that we're going to highlight in this, as we talk about the entire story, is how people ridiculed when they heard of what Noah was doing. How they ridiculed this task because it is indeed a ridiculous task. If you think about it, there are many several reasons why this is ridiculous. Number one, um, just the size of the ark. No one on earth has ever built such a, such a size. In fact, a lot, a lot of scholars are saying the only time in history that the si this size, this magnitude of construction was uh, for a boat, for a ship rather, was only matched in 1920s onward. So that's, that entire time, no one has ever seen such a, uh, the, the enormity, kung gaano kalaki tunga, well, ship, for lack of a better term. It's technically not, technically not a ship. It's technically a box. Okay? It's a box. It took 120 years to be built. Imagine doing something. God told Noah to do something, and he's just doing it. He doesn't know what it is for. He just knows a flood is about to come. Why? Because this is a... That's why people ridiculed the task. It is a ridiculous task. Hindi lang hindi impossible. It's why? Why the energy of cutting down wood to make this ark, male and female animals? The, the, the task is so ridiculous that people mocked it. Another that was not explained growing up in, uh, in the story, apparently during this time when God told Noah what's going to happen, the earth will be flooded, no one has any idea of what a flood is. In fact, no one knew about rain. The word rain did not exist. Hindi po, hindi umuulan ang mundo. In fact, in, from the day of the creation, the only way everything on earth was watered was because of a mist that comes out of the ground. It's actually in Genesis 2, verses 5 to 6. With no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground. And a mist 
was going up from the land and was watering the whole face of the ground or of the whole earth. No, ano yung ginagawa mo? Ano yung ginagawa? Kasi uulan at magbabaha sa buong mundo. Ano yung ulan? Baha. I mean, as Filipinos, we know that. It's not ridiculous here. <laughs> Pag sinabi ni Noah sa atin yun, good, good on you. Can I ride? <laughs> but during their time, in fact, they actually are on a higher altitude. They, know, they don't know what, uh, what a rain is. Even the concept of what a flood is, they have no idea. And so this entire thing was just, it doesn't make sense. It seems impossible and it seems to not make sense at all. In fact, so let me tell this to, maybe this message is not for everyone. Maybe today's message is for a specific group of people where God is telling you to do something that seems to not make sense at all. I don't know what that is for you. Maybe for some, it's God telling you, um, I'm actually calling you into ministry. I know you're earning this amount of in your corporate job, but there is a word that God has placed in you to go into ministry. And you're like, why? Mandami ng pastor, mandami ng campus missionary. Bakit ministry? Or maybe it's the other way around. You're enjoying ministry and you've been doing ministry for years and God is telling you, no, I'm calling you into corporate because I have a, an, a God, I'm about to do something in, your, in the workplace that I'm sending you and I am sending someone like you. You're about to leave this life that you thought you're going to have for the rest of your life. Why God? And I say this because there are arcs that God has placed in your heart to do and it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't. Lord, marami akong utang. <laughs> Tapos you're telling me to bless this person. Lord, paano? Wala nga ako eh. Side note. Part of that command is God telling you to pay the debt. Lord, wala po akong pambayad. Wala ka ng pambayad, pero may pang Starbucks ka. Huwag ka muna mag-Starbucks, kunin mo muna amount na yan. Ibayad mo yan, kahit konti lang na yan. Yan muna. You don't have to pay for the whole amount. Why? Because the moment you follow, I'm about to do something. Lord, forgive this person who did this to my family. First of all, hindi po manggagaling sa akin yun. Hindi ko alam ang situation nyo. Hindi ko alam ang pinagdaanan nyo. But when God tells you to forgive, He's gonna give you the grace and say, Forgive thou, Lord. Sige. What's your ark? What is that something that God is putting in your heart right now and it doesn't seem to make sense? You don't have the logistics for it? Is it a business that God has placed in your heart for a long time and you just keep putting it off? God is telling you to write something. And Lord, sinong, sinong magbabasa nito? Pero there are messages in your heart that, doesn't, just, that needs to come out and God has been telling you, write. And maybe you're just putting it off because it just doesn't make sense. You just don't have the time. God has been telling you to reunite with certain people. And Lord, paano? Ang tagal na namin hindi nagme-message. Huling message ko sa FB 2011 pa. For sure, pag nag-message ako, iisipin nila nasa networking ako, Lord. I mean, it's not bad. <laughs> Lord, paano? It doesn't make sense. What is your ark? So let me tell you this. When God tells you to do something that doesn't seem to make sense, you're in the perfect place to experience the will of God because He is about to do something big through you. Kaya nga, it doesn't make sense eh, kasi our brains can comprehend the level of power that God is gonna let you experience and that's why it doesn't make sense now. And maybe people are gonna ridicule it. Noah's task was in the level of ridicule. People are just, they're seeing a ship on top of a hill with no concept of flood, with no concept of rain, and this person has been building this for 10 years, 
20 years, 50 years na, wala pa rin nangyayari, 60 years, it's been 100 years. And now, wala pa rin. Ano yung ginagawa mo? It's been a century already, Noah. And maybe some of the tasks, some of the things that God is putting in your heart, you've been doing it, you've been following it, it still doesn't make sense. Lord, sabi mo, gawin ko to, mag-ipon ako, gawin ko, Lord, I'm, I'm believing for something, but it feels like there is no answer. Lord, sabi mo, i-reunite ko tong yung nanay ko na hindi ko kinakausap for years because of what she did, and I've been trying to say hello, to uh, to send a message, pero lagi akong ginoghost, lagi akong nire-reject, pero God, ang strong pa rin ng word mo na ituloy ko lang yung ginagawa ko. Lord, it's been five years. Now, Nothing's happening. It doesn't make sense. But when God tells you, just keep doing it. You'll know it if it's from God. We'll get to that later. It's through a word, through other people speaking the word to you. A prophetic word maybe. God's still small voice, but it doesn't change the fact. God is about to do something big if it doesn't make sense. Kasi kung lahat ng bagay logical, hindi ko kailangan ng word ni God. Amen? Hindi ko kailangan si God. Kung yung kailangan kong gawin, ah, meron akong pera para dyan, meron akong kaya ng logistics ko yan, kaya ng energy ko yan, kaya ng time ko yan, kaya, kaya ng lahat ng pagkatao ko yan, hindi ko kailangan si God. That's why we're so filled. Kaya nga minsan ang yabang ng mundo eh. But God allows us to go through things and He's going to tell us to do something that takes such an amazing amount of faith to the point that we can get ridiculed. Eh, Dre, hanggang ngayon ba? Hinihintay mo pa rin yan? Five years na? Six years na? Nakahawa ka pa rin dyan? Sabi ni Lord, hindi ko pwede may tawad. How do I know, though, Genesis 6, Genesis 6, 1 to 8. When man began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of man, man were attractive and they took as their wives any of they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His day shall be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days. And also afterward, where the sons of God came into the daughters of man, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. The Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Let me explain some of the things in this verse first. God is, is God apologetic? Um, again, when you see texts like that, that it, it's as if God forgot or God is saying sorry. We are reading from a man's point of view. Okay? It was written so that man can understand. God is both infinite and He is relational. If he is infinite. He is not apologetic. He, he, is, he has no regret. And He will not forget anything. It's just that for us to understand the pain of God, it was written in a relational manner for us to understand the grabe yung hurt ni God with people. Now, what, what did the world look like then? In fact, during that time, um, people were living about, they can exceed about 900 years. Sarap, no? Ay, hindi. Ano, kaya ba natin yun to live 900 years? 900 years. Methuselah, the oldest living recorded person in the Bible, lived for 969 years. He even outlived his dad who lived for about 900 plus years. They were people that we call the Nephilim. Now, the Nephilim is often translated to giants, fallen ones, the, the fruit of the sons of God and the human beings. Um, scholars actually debate on what Nephilims are. Some believe that they were literal giants or union ng angelic beings referred to as sons of God and human women. 
Other interpret the Nephilim as simply mga warriors or tyrants of the ancient times, and all of them could live about 900 plus years, including men. Now, there is a reason why, and it's up for discussion, obviously, why it was the description of the Nephilim is also included with the corruption of men. Maybe it has, it's, it's the cause or the effect. It's all in one text, it's all in one description, and this is the world that we live in. Now, a lot of math scholars, math scientists are saying because of the condition of the earth and how long people could live, there were about a billion people during the time of Noah. Because people are not dying easily, so it, the population just keeps adding up and adding up and adding up. Maybe not as fast as we are today, but we live in a world where people die at a certain age. They can live for like below a thousand years. A billion people with tyrants and warriors and all these amazing uh, uh, cre humanoids. I don't know what we call them. Nephilims. And yet God would choose a guy named Noah. Not only is his task ridiculed, he is a ridiculed person. Number one, he is not a shipbuilder. No one, in, no one in, on record says that he knows how to build ships. And yet God would choose a person like Noah out of a billion people on earth during that time. He would choose this guy who is not a shipbuilder, he's not even a prophet. He had one qualification. One qualification. Genesis 6, 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. When you say, okay, the, the qualification is righteous, it's not. The righteousness is a fruit of Noah walked with God. That God would choose someone walking with him. Noah walked with God. In a world of Nephilims, unholy unions, corruption, one man chose to say, I'm not going to look at the culture and do everything what everyone is doing. Instead, I'm going to be walking with God. Now, there's a cultural significance of walking. During that time, the way for them to travel to one place to another is by walking. So when people are walking, obviously, you guys are in the same pace, right? Um, my, nasisepang sa ko ng konte kasi my daughter is now at that age where she doesn't want to be carried as much. I'm kind of thankful kasi pabigat siya ng pabigat. <laughs> Pero when she, nah, Daddy, I want to walk, so we're going to walk. And obviously, when we walk, I have bigger strides. Because she has short legs, she's, she's, a big, she's a toddler. So when we walk together, I have to slow my pace down. Kasi walking together means you're in the same pace. You're almost on the same steps when you're walking together. So when we say walking together, that, uh, that Noah walked with God, there are many things that includes with this. It includes relationship. The reason why people would walk together during that time is also for safety because there's safety in numbers. There is security when people walk together. And not only is it a re the reason why it's a relationship is because when the two of you are walking together, paano ba nag-uusap yung taong magkasabay mag, mag, uh, maglakad? Nagtitext, hindi? <laughs> We, nagsisigawan ba? Hindi rin. Because if we shout at each other, we're not walking with each other. Malayo siya. Nauna siya. Or nahuli. But walking together, there is a volume of you, in the way you speak. In fact, sometimes it's very in, it's in a whispered tone because you don't need to make it loud. There is such closeness and intimacy. And when the Bible says, Noah walked with God, he was in the same step, same pace. And this is why he knew the voice of the Lord. He walks with God. That's why alam niya yung boses. Nung narinig niya yung ridiculous task, a task he knows, he will be laughed at, a task that doesn't seem to make sense. The reason why his heart was ready to, to go because he was walking with God. 
It was in same step, same pace with the Lord. This is a voice He knows. Sino dito naging anak? I mean, that's all of us, obviously. That's rhetoric. Alam niyo yung boss na nanay niyo, di ba? Ng mga moms natin. At alam natin yung pitch. Iba-ibang pitch yan. Morning, ibang pitch ng nanay. Mga moms, come on, you understand? You've been kids also once. There is a pitch. In the afternoon, must relax. My mom is kind of my, because I am, mahirap ako gisingin. I, I apologize to my mom as early as now. Mahirap ako gisingin. And like, tulog, what's that, what's that term? Tulog mantiga. Yung ganong, stay up late pa ako nung bata ako. So my mom, her level of patience changes. Gisingin niya ako ng okay lang. Anak, gising na. Kapag ipapasok ka pa sa school, after 10 minutes, di pa rin ako gumagalaw. Tataas ng konti. Di ba pa? Hanggang galit na si mami. I can't blame her because that's my fault. But the reason why I know her voice it's because I hear it every day. In fact, at home, when you're in your room, wag na voice. Wag, kahit, kahit hindi na yung boses. If you're in your room, you know who's outside your room just by hearing their steps. Right? Medyo mabigat si daddy yan. Parang nagdadaboga si kuya yun. <laughs> Parang alam niyo yun. Why? Because you would hear it every day. Do you study it? No. Is there a level of science that we have to understand? Ganito yung uh, si daddy ang tempo niya ng boses, ganito nasa second octave. Tapos, no, we don't know that. What we know is who owns it, who, knows, who owns the voice, who owns the steps. The reason for that is because we hear it every single time. We hear it every day. So when we hear the Word of God, the only way we can really be assured it's Him is if we're walking with God every day. There's a reason why we need to read the Word. It's not because it's a requirement. Hindi, hindi, ibig, da, hindi dahil sinabi ng Victory Group leader nyo, I need you to report to me five verses. Kailangan memorize to the dot, ESV, NLT, pati amplified na rin. Kailangan memorize mo every week. Mag, magre-report tayo. Hindi po ganun. I, I, in fact, if your leader is like that, do talk to me. <laughs> i require ko din siya. <laughs> But we read the word not for the people around us. We read the word because we want to hear the steps and the walk of God. So that the moment He speaks to us audibly, He speaks in our heart, we receive a prophetic word, we know, Lord, that is from you. Because people can give you prophetic words randomly. And the only way to assure, Lord, galing ba if it's according to the word. Noah walked with God. Isaiah 30, 20 to 21. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore, but your eyes shall see your teacher, and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it, when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. This is a prophetic word to to, to to Israel that they would again hear from God and they would know that this is God. John 27, uh, John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Mahirap pong sumunod. Napakahirap. We know that. Our, our natural tendency is to disobey. My three-year-old is in that stage of being terrific. <laughs> Let's speak life. <laughs> She's terrific. The terrific three. And then the fantastic four. <laughs> we, we've read this. We've been prepared for this intellectually. But to experience it, it's a whole new experience. It's a whole new uh, thing. Alam naman namin at three, kids now, toddlers will test boundaries. And I've seen all the parents <laughs> agree with me. Yes, <laughs> for some reason. I, I remember my... <laughs> Bata pa naman siya. Sabi niya, Daddy, I want egg and rice. Pagluto pa akong egg and rice. Paglabas na paglabas ko. Daddy, I'm full. <laughs> Eat this. You asked me to cook this. I don't want, I want cereals. <laughs> I made cereal. She still doesn't want it. <laughs> they like to say no. For some reason, I guess it's easy, it's fun to say, 
No, it's easier than yes. I don't know if there's a scientific uh, explanation to that. The muscles ata is, is, is easier to say the word no than yes. Is there? I don't know because it, that's how I hear it. I hear no every time. <laughs> They're at that age. And it just speaks volume on how as human beings, we're really, our sinful nature rather, is really developing at an early age to not obey. It's the human instinct of, I'm not going to obey. I'm going to test my boundaries. I'm going to test how far you're going to go and you're going to be patient with me, mommy and daddy. Let's see how far you will last. Gan parang feeling ko ganun eh. Nandito pa naman kami. <laughs> no, I, I, I love her spirit. I love her independence. Something that we kind of want to nurture. But there are times that I just, Lord, thank you for your grace. Because for some reason, our humanness, there's an easier, it's easier to say, no, Lord, I can't. And that's why I know Noah, Noah's ability to say to a ridiculous task is not by his own strength. It is because he has been walking with God for so long. He would hear that voice in an immediate, yes, Lord. Husbands, you know this feeling, right? You know the feeling of saying yes every time. Because we can't say no. Amen? Wives, di ba pag nag-no kami, di ba, end of the world. <laughs> so we say yes. Han, gusto ko ng bagong bag. Yes, dear. <laughs> Because you're walking side by side together. Noah was walking with God for so long when he heard this ridiculed task. And he was ready to be a ridiculed person. He was building this ark for 120 years. But because of that voice, that voice alone was enough to say, but it was enough for Noah. In Hebrews 11, by faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. The reason why he received a ridiculed task, he became a ridiculed person. And that's why his faith was ridiculed. I mean, let's go to the story of Noah. We, we, know, we know the animal part, so we're not going to discuss that. I don't know the, again, I don't know the logistics of that. Paano nila ginather yung mga animals na yun? Do they have this certain skin? I don't know. But what we do know is that for 120 years, his faith was questioned by everyone. And I'm pretty sure at one point in time, he himself was like, God, sinabi mo ba talaga? 119 years na, Lord! Walang wala naman nangyayari. I'm pretty sure, as a human being, we go through that. Even the strongest Christians that we know, kahit ang, parang ang lakas-lakas ng mga, ng mga kapatira nating Kristiyano, is at some point, there is still this human part of ourselves that are still, God, ikaw ba talaga to, Lord? Sinabi mo ba talaga? Lord, ang saya-saya ng buhay ko sa Pilipinas. Okay naman yung business ko doon. Pero Lord, bakit mo ko tinawag sa bansang to, Lord? <laughs> Ikaw pa talaga to, Lord? Or it's the other way around. Lord, lahat ng mga kaibigan ko nag abroad na. Lahat sila blessed doon. Then, Lord, ang dami kong plano, ang daming opening. Pero Lord, bakit ang strong sa puso ko na magsistay ako dito sa Pilipinas? Lord, galing ba talaga sa to? And then you hear it from other people. Kaya Lord ba talaga galing yan? Sinabi ba talaga? Tulog ba yung Lord mo? In fact, we live in a world where now faith is ridiculed. It is now the in thing to ridicule Christianity more than any other faith. It is now the in thing to uh, desecrate the name of God. We live in a world where our faith is constantly ridiculed and Noah lived in that kind of world. We are no strangers to the world of Noah. Kaya nga, ang scary, no? Sa world niya, yun yung mundo. When we were reading the description, di parang, parang, parang normal lang naman yan. And then the flood came after 120 years. 
his faith was ridiculed. Was ridiculed. But here's the thing. Imagine if he did not listen. Naririnig niya si God. Alam niyang si God. He's been walking with God. But maybe on the 119th year. Isang taon na lang eh. Hindi niya, syempre, hindi niya alam. Ayaw ko na, Lord. Pagod na ako, God. God, I'm done with this. I don't, it's been 119 years. I think it's fair to say naman, Lord, that I've tried. And it's valid. It's valid. And maybe some of us nasabi yun as the music team comes up. It's valid. But because the word of God was strong in Noah, yun lang hinawakan niya eh. Yun lang. Ako, I would have given up in the 50th year. <laughs> Buti lang hindi ako si Noah. Imagine if Noah had said no on the 119th year. Imagine. We wouldn't be here, number one. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Actually, Romans 10, 17. So faith comes from hearing and hearing to the word of Christ. Imagine if he did not. I mean, forget about saving the world. I don't think he's, he's been thinking about saving the world. I don't think he can. He did not save the world. The world was destroyed. But his family was. A side note, one of our main responsibilities Husbands and fathers is for the salvation of our families. A day will come, pagharap natin kay God, one of our accounting that God will do. Kamusta yung pamilya mo? Kamusta yung asawa mo? Kamusta yung mga anak mo? No one knew that. Here's my guess. Guess ko lang to. The Bible didn't say it. Pero just knowing who God is. 120 years. Maybe every 10 years, Noah was like, Lord, you're going to Maybe every 15 years, I don't want to go. I'm tired. What's going on? I'm not even supported by the people around me. I don't think my family believes that I heard you. <laughs> Maybe. I have no evidence. Hula ko lang to. Don't take this as dogma. Pero hula ko to. Just basing on how God works in our lives. Feeling go every single time because he's walking with God. He'd hear him and say, Tuloy mo lang. Kaya pa. Naka 50 years ka na, ngayon ka pa balilig, tatalikod. Tuloy mo lang. Anak, I'm here. Oh, 70 years na. Sige lang. Kaya pa, isang step lang. Next, time, next day na, tulog ka muna. Kain ka muna. Oh, hundred years. We'll go with this. I'm with you. You've been doing this. You don't know when this is gonna end, but I'm gonna be here. You don't know when the rain will, will come. I'm gonna be here. 119 years. 120 years. The ship was finished. They all entered. I'm imagining the, the, yung tunog ng ulan. Pagpasok na pagpasok nila dun sa in all of a sudden, there's storm and they were inside the ship and I believe the only thing Noah could do is like, thank you God. We're here. Obviously, that's an understatement. Here's what though. 120 years of Noah just doing that. The reason why he had, he, his faith was able to survive the ridicule from other people and from himself is because yes, he knows he's been walking with God. Here's the thing. Sino bang nauna? Sino bang lumapit? Because every time we talk about faith, it talks about the things that we're believing for. And if you receive something, wow, our, your faith is amazing. And sometimes we associate faith with our skills. 
Ang task kasi ng ano ko eh, ng heart ko to accept and receive at sobrang powerful ng faith ko kaya ito nangyari. And sometimes we associate faith with our own skill and our, the way we, ay, ginami ko kasi nababasang word eh, kaya gabi yung taas ng faith ko. Grabe, alam nyo, if there's a topic on faith, you have to listen to all my stories kasi I am a man of faith. Di ba, if you listen to a person like that, parang ikaw na, congratulations. That's not me. Kasi hindi ko kaya eh. Tingin nyo, sino lumapit? No was walking with God. Sinong lumapit? It took 120 years for him to finish the boat, the, the, for the ship to be built. We have a cross that happened 2,000 years ago. Hebrews 12, 1-2, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, Noah included as a witness, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who, for, it says here, the founder and the perfecter. He started the faith. He is perfecting it. Who for the joy was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Noah had the evidence after 120 years. We have the evidence 2,000 years ago. Those are two different stories. Wala si Noah noon. Tayo, we have the evidence 2,000 years ago of our faith starting. So even then, I believe it was God who started approaching Noah. And that's why we have the first definition of faith. That faith is putting our complete trust in the Lord in spite of the ridicule, in spite of the illogicalness of things, in spite of things that doesn't make sense. Faith is God, I'm gonna trust you with all my heart even though I can't, even though my brain can comprehend. And the reason why we can do that is because Jesus, God, started that faith in you. I believe it was God who walked with Noah. Amen? <laughs> Noah's choice came after. It was God who stepped. All of a sudden, Noah was walking alone. And all of a sudden, here comes another step right next to him, calling him, walking with him. His faith, wow, 120 years. The reason why he was able to hold on to was because God walked with him. So when someone asks, what is faith? Let me tell you a story. Maybe for some of you, that's your story. You're here because of something that did not make sense happen in your life. Maybe you're here because you've been jumping from one relationship after another and it doesn't make sense why people just doesn't love you. It feels like people are leaving you. It feels like people are running away from you. And all of a sudden, here comes someone running after you instead of running away from you. And this someone met you at that dark road and met you and introduced himself and said, I am here, my child. I am God. Let me tell you a story. Maybe your story is you're in a place of wealth and provision and it feels like it doesn't make sense why they promised me that when I have my achievements, I have my medals, I have everything that I asked for, my heart will be filled with joy and happiness. Then why is it that I'm in my room crying because my life is so empty? I have everything in my life and it feels like I have nothing. And all of a sudden, here comes God introducing Himself to you, has been running after you. After you've been running uh, towards wealth, God has been running after you and all of a sudden, He met with you on the road and introduced Himself. Maybe it did not make since then, let me tell you a story. You want to know more about faith? Let me tell you a story of someone who's just not worth anything. I'm not the best person at school, not the best child because all my siblings are always the highlight of the family. I'm not the best student. I'm not the best person at work. I'm just not the best. I've never been the choice. People have always rejected me. People have always left. No one would choose me. And I would not even choose myself because if you know my past, if you know what I've done, you will not choose me because even now I cannot choose myself over other people. But God came. And it doesn't make sense. Let me tell you a story. We're talking about faith. You want to hear about a story of faith? 
that person seated next to you is a whole encyclopedia of faith is a whole encyclopedia of God's grace and mercy and forgiveness. That person seated next to you is an entire story of redemption and forgiveness all because that person you're with right now met Jesus on the cross and started walking with God because God walked with you first. Can we all stand up? Come on, let's give God praise. Because I believe your stories, like the story of Noah, will not just be a blessing to other people, but I believe it will be a cause of change for other people as well. Especially when we talk about faith. We're going to be talking about faith over the next few weeks. And we are excited for your stories of faith. Faith like no other. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you, God, for everyone here that you've called to be here. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your love for each and every one of us. If you're here and you have an ark, something that God is telling you to do that does, doesn't seem to make sense, wala kayong logistics to do it, but it feels like pero ang strong ng pagkakasalita sa inyo ng Panginoon. If that is, so can you raise up your hand? We want to believe with you. We want to stand with you in this journey of faith. Thank you, Lord. I'm raising up my hand also. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you see the hands of these, uh, of your children, God. Lord, may arko din kami ang ginagawa na pinagawa mo. Hindi <laughs> namin alam kailan matatapos, anong mangyayari, uh, what's the outcome, God. But we know that you just told us to do something. And even though, Lord, for some of us, we haven't even started yet because our brain just can't wrap itself around, Lord. But Lord, thank you that that faith will come from you. Lord, that this task, this call, will be only about us walking with you, you walking with us, and that we get to hear your voice, Lord, even stronger. So we're raising up our hands, and we're saying, Lord, perfect our faith, the faith that you started, the faith that you're perfecting. So we thank you for your grace, in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord make his face turn towards you and grant you peace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We're all dismissed. We'll see you all next week.